everybody down on Royal Street or Ave or whatever, guys. We got music playing. We have these beautiful French Quarter buildings. We are in the heart of the French Quarter. We have the world famous and one of the most kind of scenic, noted sights behind me here. That is that great big parish. Do I remember the name? Absolutely not. But a beautiful place down here, guys. Definitely one of a kind. They're doing a big film set behind us here. And uh, we're about to go get some food. And we made it to our destination, the famous Court of the Two Sisters. There's a lot of history in this restaurant. The building here dates back to the 1800s. It changed hands, of course, a number of times, functioning as I think everything from like shops to now being a restaurant. It's been here for a long, long, long time. There's apparently like a magical gate in here that gives you luck that came from Spain. Um, but yeah, super, super cool, guys. So right down here on Royal, and I think it's Toulouse. There's a couple like entrances. Uh, we're on the Royal Ave. And it is like Bourbon Street's a street up. The cathedral's just down there. So it's like super downtown location. And why we're here, guys, is because it's supposed to be the craziest, best buffet in New Orleans. Yes, the best buffet in the Nala, all of New Orleans area. This is a brunch buffet. It's open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. seven days a week. And it's jazz. Yes, they have jazz. Really kind of giving back to that culture of the New Orleans. Um, so if you come at 11.30, around 11.30, we're here at 12. 11.30, they switch over. Did you lose a couple items? Um, pre prior to 11.30 being like uh, you have eggs and andouille sausage if you're there before 11.30 but after 11.30 is when all the good items come out. We're talking prime rib, yes a prime rib carving station. You have an omelet station available all day. They do eggs benedicts guys. There are supposed to be shrimp, supposed to be gumbos, all kinds of Creole southern cuisine. So let's go into the best buffet. I made a reservation so let's hop on in. They do have a beautiful courtyard as well. Probably gonna sit inside. It's about 100 degrees, lots of humidity, but uh, let's head on in and let's eat some food. All right, so we got seated. It's gonna be, uh, I mean, they're playing jazz. This is a jazz buffet, so it might be a little interesting with the audio. But before we show you the extensive food, let me show you this courtyard real quick. Oh, that's my face. Look at this, guys. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful courtyard. Again, normally they do seat this. Uh, it's like impending rain and it's really humid and hot. So I don't think too many people are out here, but they do have normally a waterfall. They have this beautiful coverage, which would definitely help break up some of the heat. But that being said, let's show you what we have to eat because we got some cool options. So we do have our omelet station right there. We then start over here. Kind of the cold items. We have a seafood slaw. We have a chicken curry, crawfish pasta. We have some tuna salad. We have some chicken salad. We have cheese. We have a potato salad. We have mushrooms. We have marinated beet salad. Man, I love the beet salads down here. We got a tomato and mozzarella uh, kind of salad. Looks good. We got a three bean salad. Got some uh, iceberg lettuce, a variety of different dressings, some cucumbers, some uh, peppers, some different cheeses. We have some cornbread. We have a French bread. We have this, looks like a raisin bread. We have some biscuits also. We have boiled shrimp. So they are Louisiana boiled shrimp. They are cold, I like it hot better. We have a variety of different fruits. You know I love my fruits like pineapple, strawberries, I see grape jelly. We have some chocolate sauces. We have some brownies. We have, oh my gosh guys, look at all these cakes. And a pecan pie. You know I'm all about that pecan pie down here. All right, so that's that. Now let's look at all the hot items. So we have a ribeye roast carving station. That's definitely a good place to start. We do have a turtle soup, turtle soup with sherry, au sherry, that's a very Creole thing. We have our red beans, we have a pasta primavera, we have grits, we have uh, granadas, which are, from my understanding, kind of like a stewed flavored meat. We have creamed spinach, we have a corn, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. We have a garlic potato, sweet, uh, sweet glazed sweet potatoes. Oh my gosh, that looks like candy right there. We have some chicken bon femme, which that is definitely ribs and not a chicken bon femme, but I ain't complaining. We have a duck larange. We have some hash browns, some Cajun jambalaya. We have a shrimp etouffee. I do love the etouffees. We have shrimp pasta. We have a lemon pepper fish. We have a bread pudding. Ooh, that looks like a pretty sticky bread pudding. And we have some bananas fosters. Oh, 
All right, everybody, so we made it in. Now, I will say, like I said, it's pretty loud, obviously, you know, jazz buffet, which is pretty cool. I mean, how often do you get to go to a place, get a crazy buffet, and have a live jazz show? So, definitely pretty cool. Um, I did get a iced tea as well. She's refilling, but to start off, guys, of course, I got some salad. I'm all about the salad, some spinach, some tomatoes. Thank you so much, sir. We got some pickled beets. I'm all about those pickled beets. And then on this plate, this is a really cool looking plate. I got some of the, uh, the ribeye roast. I got some duck larange. I got one of the big, big ribs they have, a pork rib. And I got some uh, granadas, which I think it looks like a veal. Uh, I've heard like you can get pretty much any meat. And then I got some turtle soup to try. So I never had turtle soup before. Definitely a kind of Creole thing. So I'm gonna start with some of these healthy vegetables though. Always eat your vegetables, kids. Beets are pretty good. They taste uh, not super sweet, but they do got a good flavor though. It's 12.50 now. By the time I set up, recorded everything. So I have about two hours to eat. So we better make it worthwhile. I do love vegetables and those beets are good. So anyway, nobody came to watch me eat vegetables. So let's get into some of this good stuff here. Turtle soup, I'm gonna give it a shot. I think it's a good place to start. I've never, ever, ever had turtle soup. I don't even know what's in it besides probably turtle. So yeah, like legit turtle, you know, like the reptile. So here we go. It's savory. I kind of get like a gumbo eat to eat. -y. Gumbo eat etouffee kind of a flavor and mix on it. The meat seems like it's pulled. Some celery, some spices. Not bad. By no means does it taste like, you know, odd or weird or anything. I like it. Definitely a go. Yeah, turtle soup. And then like I said, the sherry edition, that's kind of something they have up there. Very traditional thing. Add some sherry in your turtle soup. Let's try this duck larange. This looks really nice. Tender duck, really nice orange flavor on it. Definitely got that. But really nice herbs in there. I'd get more of that. That was really, really nice. Let's try this granadas, which I think I think is a veal. So it's basically a kind of you know stewed piece of meat cooked in a sauce. Onions, peppers. What it really reminds me of a like gumbo, if that makes sense. Try this prime rib or ribeye. It's the same thing. So this was, they didn't really have anything super rare. This is a little bit more uh, of a mid, 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 mid slash midwell. Who doesn't love beef? And I'm gonna grab, that's horseradish too. Yeah, it's beef. It is good. I got a little nice fatty piece here. Mm. Oh man, that was the money. Put a little horseradish. Delicious. So I think with the... Mm, that was a really nice bag. I'm definitely gonna get some more. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt on it. It's not salted. So this is where I kind of hate to use my hands, but I don't know how else to eat this rib, but this is a really nice looking rib, big fat rib. Give it a bite. Tender braised pork rib. Definitely soft, falls off the bone. Not smoked. I call it a pretty generic kind of barbecue sauce on it. But it's pretty good. Now they are doing a bit of a changeover. Like I'm waiting for a new rib roast. The etouffee, uh, they were changing over. What I did get is I got a little bit of a um, shrimp and andouille gumbo to try. I got some of this lemon pepper fish. I got what they call a seafood slaw. So they didn't actually have a straight coleslaw that I saw, but they had this seafood slaw, which is basically coleslaw with shrimp in it. Interesting. So I think it's actually more like a ranch dressing. I get a ranch taste from it. I got some of the chicken curry there. Mm. Oh, wow. That was surprisingly good. Honestly, I had really low expectations for that. Being like it was pulled chicken and curry with a flavor in that. Mm. Deep curry notes, nice bit of oil, a bit of a punch. And I got some of the tuna salad as well. There's definitely some other seafood in that tuna salad. I get some like shellfish, crab or, or crawfish in there. I'll try this lemon pepper fish. Strong lemon note. 
it's a nice fillet, like a more fishy tasting fish, if that makes sense. I'm not saying it's old or bad, but you know, certain fish taste more like fish. And do a chicken gumbo. Again, normally probably on rice. Mm. Got some peppers, some celery in there. One thing I do like about this, really nice tasting sausage. Like I said, this is definitely a light plate, waiting for all the changeover. But that's buffet logic, guys, that's how you get the best. If you notice something's low, wait for the new stuff to come out. So I'm gonna eat the salad, you already saw me eat all the stuff, so I'll just eat it, and then we'll go get some more stuff. We got that changeover, so they brought a brand new rib roast. Guys, the primer roast, super fatty, but it looks super good. Definitely a little bit more on the rare side, which we're looking for. Also got that brand new shrimp etouffee, excited to try that. And I got a little bit of the um, jambalaya also. Of course, I also got some you know, mushrooms, some marinated tomatoes, some beef salad. Let's try the jambalaya. So this jambalaya was just chicken, andouille sausage, and rice. So andouille sausage again, really nice bite. We had that in the uh, gumbo. Definitely the strongest flavor in that is kind of the rice itself. Like I've had some where the rice, the, does that make sense? Like the flavor of rice is more of a partial, that's something more leading rice flavor, if that makes sense. Just it tastes more like a rice dish. Try this uh, shrimp etouffee, guys. This is blazing hot. Mm. Oh, that is good. Literally just basically a bowl of shrimp. Some celery in there. Oh, yeah. I know people often put this over rice or something, but this is perfect as it is. Onions. Mm. What I love so much about that, that was the main flavor. That was the lead. Shrimp. Mm. And that's what I'm looking for. You know I mean, like I said, the jambalaya was bad, but the leading note was not, the, you know, the meats or the or even the Creole seasonings. I would argue it was the rice. That the leading note is the shrimp, and it is awesome. Great sauce, not a very strong tomatoey one, just really, really nice. Right, so this, guys, not only is it rare, but we got that really nice crescent herb. A little bit of salt here, I'm going to add that on. It's a nice fatty piece. Oh my gosh, guys. That was delicious. That bite, so fatty. Literally melt in your freaking mouth. A little bit of horseradish too. I'm a big horseradish fan. It's a pretty spicy horseradish. This is awesome, guys. I love, love, love beef. Yeah. That ribeye roast, guys, straight fire. There are just like some really big piece of just fat. I'm not gonna eat the just fat. Oh, and we got our music back. But hot damn. This freaking beef, that's where it's at. We're getting more of that. All right, so waiting on the changeover again, guys. But in the meantime, I got one of the Benedicts. Eggs Benedict with ham from the station. Again, this are made to order. And they also had a seafood one and a bacon one. Um, so guys, I love a good Eggs Benedict. It's been a long time since I have one. Absolutely doused in hollandaise sauce. I think I'm gonna have to fork and knife this. But, oh, guys, the explosion of that yolk. That literally just blew up. Normally I'd like to take them in a bite, but literally just blew up. savoriness of that egg, the cured flavor on that ham, that yolk. Very, very good, everybody. I'm just going to mop up this yolk. Mm. Ooh-wee. That's one thing that makes me scream. Mm. Mm. Oh, my gosh. We're getting another one of those. So still waiting on that changeover, that being said. In the meantime, I'm waiting for that new beef, guys. New beef coming out. I did get some more duck l'orange. Still good. Nice sweetness on it with that savory duck. Great flavor. Now, I did get some of this corn dish, which I don't know how to pronounce. Very French game, but I'll give it a shot. Looks really creamy. It reminds me of like a lote, almost like a creamy mayo aspect to it. But yeah, that tastes like an elote to me. Really nice, kind of get that, again, that mayonnaise flavor. I got some more uh, gradelles, gr I was saying it right earlier, gr gradelles, whatever, which is veal. 
Build up. All right, and so something I'm so excited about, guys. We have two more Benedicts here. I have a seafood one, which is really interesting. So it is a breadcrumb. It's almost like a stuffing with seafood in it. So they mentioned there's crab, shrimp, crawfish in it. And then I got the other one with the ham, like I had last time. Let me just, I, I got to go a little bit lighter on the hollandaise sauce. So hopefully I can just pick this one up and give it a bite. Let's do this. That drippy, runny, delicious yolk. Mm. Succulent, savory. So good. I love a good Benedict. I'm just gonna bite this one. Let's try this seafood one. This is gonna be really interesting. Oh, guys, that exploding yolk. Woo! With the hollandaise sauce all the seafood addition. Definitely strong seafood flavor. Real strong. Just that breadcrumb. It is good. But definitely the uh, seafood takes over the flavor. Still waiting on that beef, but they say it's coming in the meantime. I want to try one of the chef's favorite. This is a seafood pasta. Mm. Oh man. The flavors in that. Graham, that is a great Alfredo. You see how fatty and creamy that is? Succulent for sure. And then I got some more salad. Although admittedly, they've been really slow restocking the salad bar too. So hopefully they restocked that a bit. All right, so they finally got the beef out. Unfortunately, it's a lot more well, it's a bit more well done than I would like. I like a little rare. In the meantime, I also got some of their red beans. So this is a very like Louisiana thing, red beans. It's a cooked down bean. Lots of andouille sausage in it. It is a nice flavor. Red beans and rice is a big thing. And this, this, uh, this beef roast too is, it seems to be a little leaner. Yeah, the last one was straight fire. This one, not the same actually. A bit of salt and horseradish doesn't make you better, but arguably this doesn't even seem like a ribeye, like at all. Not as nice of a cut as the last one. Hopefully, got another new one coming. It's just big and fatty like the last one. Still waiting on that new beef and everything. They did restock the salad bar a little, which is good. So I got some more of, um, kind of we had earlier, some of the chicken curry, which is real good. Also got some three bean salad to try. Whole bunch of tomatoes. I like those. I'll try this bean salad. Not bad, light in flavor. Balsamic vinaigrette kind of flavor from it. But that curry, love that. Ooh, man. That curry is good, nice and sweet. Surprisingly good. One of my favorite, maybe my favorite thing off that salad bar so far, that chicken curry. Now a big juicy Benedict. This one I didn't ask for the light, light hollandaise sauce, so I'm just gonna defork and knife it. Woo! The explosion of that yolk. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Man, these are good. I haven't had Benedict in a long time. Mm. Definitely not calorie free. So we have about an hour left for the buffet. I think we'll have enough time to you know eat everything we want. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna get some fruit. You guys have a really nice fruit selection. I got some uh, cantaloupe, I got some pineapple, I have some uh, strawberries, a little bit of chocolate sauce, which I love, 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 love fruit, guys. When, it, when it's good, it's good. Try this cantaloupe out. Not bad. Cantaloupe, when it's ripe, it's really good. I think everybody knows what a strawberry is like, but... I do enjoy a strawberry. I think it's acceptable to use my hand. Ooh, that chocolate sauce. 
That strawberry and that sauce. Mm. That's a good chocolate sauce, nice and rich. Now some pineapple. Mm. Oh my gosh. Pineapple is one of my favorite things ever. When it's ripe, it's so good. And this is ripe. Still waiting on that new beef, but apparently it's coming. In the meantime, guys, got some more of this chicken curry. And I know it's making it so sweet. There's raisins in it. Yes, there's little white raisins in it. Um, one new thing I got is I got some grapes in like a grapes in like a fruit dip. Tastes good. I'd say in the next uh, maybe I'll do like one more good plate of like non-dessert food. Mm. Then we're gonna get more into dessert. And we got lots to try. So it's 2 10, 10 after 2. This place must be open for 50 more minutes. I noticed the jazz guys are packing up. Not sure what that means. So I did get um, some more shrimp etouffee. I did, they did bring out a new beef roast. Unfortunately, it's not really rare. And interestingly, it's kind of, I'm not trying to be critical, but it's, it's cold. Um, like even the fat is solidified. Like it should be clear. You know what I'm saying? So I did get two pieces. Gonna see how it is. I also got the um, candied sweet glazed sweet potatoes to try. This looks insane. Looks like, like, like pure sugar, sweet potatoes, and pecans. Oh my gosh. Mm. There's actually some citrus in it. Wow, talk about a creamy sweet potato. Definitely sweet. Pecans are actually even cooked soft, so definitely cooked in with it, not really like an addition. Admittingly, not actually as sweet as I would have thought it was by looking at it. Shrimp etouffee. So this is what I'd say. I know they gotta hold it, etc. But this is actually, it's actually cold. And these are some really, really nice fatty parts. If this was hot, this would be straight fire. But it is actually, like, I don't even have room temperature. I think maybe even cooler than room temperature. Admittedly, it's still pretty good, but it'd be so much better if it was hot. Busting the dessert because why not? So I got some fruit. Where are you? The fruit. The fruit is good. Then over here, I have some pecan pie. Actually, hold on. I got some bread pudding, which is a super, super buttery looking bread pudding. I got a pecan pie, some homemade whipped cream, and a giant, 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 huge, huge slice of cheesecake. Look at the size of that thing. Massive. I think it's a. I want to say raspberry. Which we'll try. And then there's banana fosters up there still. And the jazz guys are back. All right, try the search, guys. This looks super soft, super succulent. There's literally swimming in butter. There's some white raisins in there. Kind of in that curry. Get that egg flavor. I think there's a little bit of a, a rum or a whiskey sauce. Really nice allspice cinnamon. Try this cheesecake. Huge piece of cheesecake. Mm. Ooh. It's actually a really good cheesecake. I don't, don't really like a berry or strawberry raspberry cheesecake. Super soft and airy. Just delicious. Mm, very good. Surprisingly good. Try this pecan pie. Mm, really nice crust. Those pecans. It's not super, super, super sweet. Some pecan pies are deathly sweet. This is not that sweet. Very balanced. 
one thing about Louisiana, especially South Louisiana, New Orleans, the weather changes like crazy. Like now I'm cold because it was so hot, I was so humid, but it just rained like crazy. That's when it got dark. See how much brighter it is now? The sun's out, crazy difference. All right, I got some a little, 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 little bit of this lemon cake to try just because. You know what? It's actually super, super good. You get a really nice like coconut. That was orange cake too. That one tastes like orange. That lemon cake, or the yellow cake I should say, straight fire. Also some banana fosters. Mm. So the banana fosters is a very New Orleans thing. It's basically cooked bananas and a sugar and rum sauce and butter. The foster's not bad. The bananas still have a good bite. I do wish I had a little bit more of a rum or cinnamon flavor. I find they're very, very mildly flavored, if that makes sense. Of course, I got some pineapple, but you guys know what that's like. And then pecan pie. I know pecan pie is a thing of Louisiana. Pecans are pretty big here, candy pecans. Of course, it's a thing in the South. Comment down below if you say pecans or pecans. If you're in the north, it's pecans. If you're down here in the south, it's pecans. All right, so we got another round of dessert. Admittingly, I wish I probably had a little more real food before I went to dessert, just because it's kind of hard to go back uh, once you've eaten something so sweet, you know what I mean? Mm. Bread pudding is pretty dang good. So there's some bread pudding. I did get a piece of that like lemon cake or coconut, whatever it is, a yellow cake. And a piece of that cheesecake. And that's pretty much gonna be it for us today, I think. We had lots of food. Pretty good experience. Staff have been super friendly. Super calming, super nice. It has yellow cake by itself. And a big bite. Yeah, I really don't get lemon. I get like, more like a custard. Which is, there's like layers of custard. That's what I describe it, a custard cake, rather than like a lemon cake. This is it the orange, you taste the orange, the lemon, like or that yellow cake, it's just tastes like lemon. Woo, cheesecake. Very delicious. So I got some more pecan uh, pie, also got some ice cream. Good ice cream. I almost wonder if they make it here. They had it like in this cold churn thing on the uh, salad bar. So it's a little melted. Very light tasting. Like, I really wonder if they make it here. And then the uh, pie, of course, still very good. Do you have an experience? I'll give you all my thoughts here in a moment. And the last thing I'm gonna get and try is I got some more of that ice cream. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed everything. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Last thing I got, guys, was some banana fosters and ice cream. You get that a little hot, a little cold, lots of sweet. Yeah, I'm convinced they make that ice cream. It just doesn't taste commercial. All right. That's it, though, guys. We definitely ate our way through this buffet. And uh, like I guess I'll give you my final thoughts from outside. Let's head out of here. Let's talk about this experience. All right, so it's kind of funny. Uh, my, my lens is fogging up because of the temperature difference. We have the famous Court of the Two Sisters as well. And then over here we have the famous gate, um, which I guess this came from Spain. It says, thank you, and may the charm of happiness be bestowed upon you as you pass through the gate. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, this is supposed to bestow happiness upon us. So we'll walk through there as we leave. All right, so we're here at the airport. So the Court of Two Sisters, this is how I feel about it. I found the service was phenomenal. They were so attentive, really got that kind of big, easy New Orleans, just great attitudes. Um, oh, hold on, let's change that a little bit. There we go. Um, but yeah, just super, super friendly. Um, Everybody was awesome. Now, again, I don't know if that's because the uh, like they had le less than normal seating because the 
outside, like the courtyard was closed due to the rain, but that was perfect. So now, it did cost me basically 50 bucks, you know what I mean? Um, so it was $33, but you know, after tip and blah, blah, blah. So for 50 bucks, when it came to the food, I'll put it this way. I want to give it a second shot, and this is why. So for a $50 meal, I appreciated it was an all-you-can-eat, it was a buffet. The salad bar for me, I felt, was a little lacking, and I, it, I partly, personally did this to myself, but I found myself waiting a lot for items, and it was not necessarily that, like, oh, they're out of beef, but let me use the example, right? So the first time I had the beef, it was uh, pretty good. The second time I had it was life-changing. The third time, it seemed like a totally different cut, and then the last time, it was cold. So where, where they had it up there, I was like, okay, I'll just use my buffet logic and I'll wait for a new one to come out. And it never really came out good, if that makes sense. Oddly enough, like for example, these spinach on the salad bar, they, they didn't restock that for like over an hour, just kind of odd. Um, so it was, you know, overall like the f flavors um, were very light and mild. So if you're looking for what I would call more of like a real authentic, deep south, um, pack a punch of Louisiana southern flavor, it's not there. I think it's a lot more, I'm gonna use the term like domesticated or toned down probably to suit most people's likings. Um, that being said, the overall quality was good. Um, just a little bit smaller salad bar than I would have liked. And like I said, I'm, I'm gonna, in all fairness, I wanna go back and give it a second shot because like I didn't really get to eat as much as I would have liked to. And like I said, because I often found myself trying to wait for these new items to come out, which when they did either weren't as good as before or were limited. So again, I partially do that myself, but like I would go back and eat more, I, I, but I wouldn't do that next time. I would just like, you know, if they didn't have beef or the beef didn't look good, I just hit like the duck l'orange hard. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I would do. So those are my final thoughts. Again, staff were awesome. Food quality overall was good, but a few weird happenings with the food. And um, yeah, so long story short, Court Two Sisters, invite me back and I will give you a second shot or opportunity. But great location, beautiful, right downtown, super cool. If you're down there anyway, I mean, you know, as per the value, it's it's pretty good compared to going to like your typical restaurant because it is all you can eat. Um, and like the eggs Benedict and stuff being made to order, that was pretty cool as well. So overall thoughts, there we go. And thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you, thank you Norms. We are about to embark on the craziest Louisiana adventure possible in part two of this mini series where we live like we're from southern louisiana we are doing the unthinkable we are fishing like you've never seen it before we're having real crawfish boils if you missed part one we went and caught alligators i caught frogs with my bare hands we have experienced just the utmost crazy things and you will not want to miss it so check out part one link down below and get ready for part two I want to give a huge thanks to Billy and Gina for helping make this happen. Great friends of the channel. And at that, everybody, welcome to the Ultimate Louisiana Experience. I'm happy to share it with you. We're here on day two, and trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. So be sure you saw part one linked down below, and let's get to it. All right, everybody, so this is something I've been trying to do for so long, and I am so blessed to be given the opportunity by Billy and his family here to actually be a part of this. Guys, we're having our first real authentic Louisiana backyard style like crawfish boil. We're having crab boil. We got fried fish, we got alligator, we got frog's legs. We got everything, and I'm excited. So yeah, I'm gonna, obviously I've been showing you some of my Louisiana adventure. We're gonna continue that, document that, and uh, we're gonna be eating here just momentarily. And here in the big pot with like the double boiler so you can take it out. You already got some of the Zadran seasoning, some lemon, and I think it's gonna get, you know, waiting for it to heat up, get to a boil, propane tank, burner, and we'll go from there. Then we got a great big bag and sack of crawfish. 
which are all very lively. They literally just got them this morning. Cool, man. And they're like, you, you just pick those up and they're, well, I mean, I guess they're fresh as can be, really. Yeah. Put them in this big thing. Probably, you, you clean them out, you wash them out. You wash them before I got them. That is a, that is a basket of crawfish. <laughs> Look at that. That is a pile of crawfish, everybody. Like, this is a very, very, very large bucket. Yeah, they are feisty. So now because it's later in the year, you said the shells are gonna be a bit harder, right? Well, these are kind of soft still. Oh, they're still soft, okay. But, uh, yeah, these are Bell River crawfish. Cool. Look at that. Yeah, these guys are feisty. Can't, uh, definitely fresh, you can tell. I mean, you go to a store often, they, a lot more docile, so we're in for a, we're in for a Big treat. Ones. Yeah. And then we got the boil. Oh yeah. It smells great. All right, here we go, everybody. Crawfish. Yeah. That is a done boil right there, guys. We got corn, sausage, crawfish. What more can you ask for? There we go. We got some. Uh, what we got? What we got going over here, Billy? We got some alligator fish being fried. Look at that. Is that frog right there? There we go. Look at that, guys. This is alligator meat. That's alligator right there. Skin and clean the alligator. Looking good. We frying some batter in. You got anything in the fryer right now? We even got it going. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. There we go, we guys. We got our frog's legs, soft shell crab. The fryer is heating on up. This is uh, this is gonna be a feast, that's for sure. So, woo, I am excited. Here we got some fish, some that we got the other day, some that's a little, little extra, even perch, catfish, all the above. We got it all. We got it all. Amberjack. Amberjack, yeah, I've never had that before. That looks pretty meaty. Just cutting the little fillets. It's gonna be battered it, fish frying soup. Everybody does it a little different. I do just hot sauce. All right, here we go. So we got the secrets going here, guys, for some good ain't no fried secrets. fish. Everybody does this shit. Just a All right, bit. Well, nor this is a, for secrets for the people in the north who definitely don't do it this way. <laughs> hot sauce, mustard, and Tony, how do you pronounce it? Satchery's. Satchery's yeah, seasoning. It's Basically, it's seasonal. Cajun, Cajun seasoning. Satchery's is silent. Yeah, yeah I would never get all this. Mix it up. Is silent. Then we're going to add in our flour and everything. There we go. Batter and some fish. Shake, shake, shake. And then we got a hunter dropping some fish. This is your, this is your fish fry right here, guys. The real deal. Oh yeah, looking good. How long is that gonna go in there for, Hunter? A few minutes. minutes. It'll probably cook pretty quick the first time. It'll slow down. Nice and hot right now, so there we go. Looking good. One of my favorite guys, fried catfish, whatever other kinds of fish we got. So what's pretty cool is that's actually a homemade fryer. And uh, I mean, it, it just, it works. You know, they got a burner underneath it, propane, a basket to pull it up. And it's really funny. You can smell like the mustard kind of boiling off it. That makes sense. And you can tell I got some good sun yesterday, guys. I'm a little sun kiss, but uh, this is amazing. So I'm definitely excited. It smells delicious, but like I said, that little bit of that zippy mustard, it's kind of cool, but smell it boiling off. And we got the fish starting to almost float here. And as it comes to float, it means it's basically done. Get it nice and crisped up. Look that good, the, yeah, cri golden crispy. There you go, looking good. Nice smelling, delicious looking pieces of fish. There's your fresh fried fish, everybody. How you doing? There's a fry. Beautiful. You got some 
some crawfish uh, taste testing going on right now. We got to. Uh, so as Billy was saying, Billy was saying you got to let the crawfish basically cool down from the boil, uh, and then it absorbs up all the flavor. And then basically, when you know, whenever it's done, cool down enough, soaked up all the flavors, you know, the sauces, the spices, the seasonings, you just eat them, and that's it. You know, and like you said, you just Billy said, Billy said you just put whatever in a boil you want, and then you get some for everybody. Is that right? You want Brussels sprouts? You want the cauliflower? You want broccoli? You want it? Put it in there and let it soak. Broccoli. That sounds great. Maybe I'll have to do that. Some flavored uh, cra uh, crawfish boil here in a minute. So I look forward to trying it, guys. This looks fantastic. All right. And this is the process, guys. We got the we got the okay from the crawfish gatekeepers, and here we are. Now we got the boil up out of the water. What are you gonna do now, Billy? Just let them drain for let them drain for about five minutes, and then put them on the table, and everybody's gonna start eating. Drain them. And the crabs come next. Drain them, put them on the table, and cook the crabs. All right, guys, that's exciting. Multiple, multiple courses. So I think that's the cool thing. Now, Hunter, question. Is it normal to have like multiple rounds and courses in a boil? So like you do like the crawfish and then you'll do like the crabs, like is that normal? Yeah. What do I'll all? do is I'll change the water. Change the water out? Because it'll be too salty. If okay. You leave, if you leave because of the, the Zatarain seasoning and stuff like that, they got a lot of salt in it. Yeah. So if you leave the water, the, the next boil will be really salty. So you're gonna change the water out, basically brand new boil, get the crabs going in there, totally different. In the meantime, we'll eat crawfish and fried fish. And then like you said, we had alligator coming. We are, we're in for a feast. And guys, it's happening. The boil is going on the table. I love it. Literally just dumping it on. <laughs> Team effort. Oh my gosh, guys, I see some onions in there. They look awesome. There's literally a sack of potatoes. Look at all that delicious corn and potatoes, the sausage, all the bay leaves, the spices. It smells so good. I'm excited. Ready to eat? Great. <laughs> Sorry. Right, everybody, this is how you do the crawfish. I have, I have uh, you know, basically been told in there you go just like that according to everybody here i do it the right way you basically just rip the tail off kind of break into it a little bit get your tail there we go guys we got the back the back louisiana approval so i appreciate that so let's dive into some of this here momentarily all right so we're digging in got some peeled all right so let's give this a go so we have our crawfish here i'm gonna kind of take it Get in there, break it, we got our tail. Some people claim they like the juice out of the head. I don't think there's anything in it, but... There you go, for the record. Ooh, guys, seasonings, yeah. Break in here a little bit, get that tail. Oh yeah, everybody. And a dip. People also really like crawfish dip, which is ketchup and mayo, is that right? Yes. Ketchup and mayo, it's a very popular thing. I'm gonna pass on that, that just ain't my jam. I do love ketchup, but guys. Oh man, this is definitely the best crawfish I've ever had, I have ever tasted. And I see why this is a, like a weekly thing down here. Oh my god, game changer. In fact, I would go as far to say, this is the first time I've ever been tempted to suck the juices out of like the body of the crawfish. Dude, that is good. Guys, this is nuts. All right, yeah, I gotta, I gotta say, this is, yeah, this is insane. So yeah, 10 out of 10, this has more than my approval. Delicious. Guys, you need a real Louisiana boil here. And I'll show you, my hands are all seabody, but literally just a communal family style table. Everybody just digging on in here. Hello. Yeah, say hello. So, wow. That is, uh, that is awesome. We got some olives as well. Biting olive. What else we got here? I see some sausage, corn. Just a little onion. 
I want a little onion. Mango oh, garlic. Garlic. It is a head of garlic. <laughs> Delicious, nonetheless. Beautiful flavor. Guys, look at this. This is like a whole freaking onion. And I want to try this. I think like a soft cooked onion like this would be awesome. That onion. Guys. I see why you do this. <laughs> this is awesome. And Billy was saying, like everybody was saying, Mommy, I can't do this. You basically uh, need some help. There you, go. you can throw anything in the boil. This is just like, this is awesome. I am pumped. Well, we are blessed to say the least, so let's definitely continue to dig in here. We're gonna have some fried fish. We're gonna have some alligator here shortly. We're gonna have some crabs, so my first backyard crab boil. And all that good stuff, guys, so delicious. All right, just for the, I will try the crawfish and the sauce because they said it's the thing to do. So ketchup and mayo. And I, I mean, hey, I do not, I do like those things, but sometimes I'm a purist, but let's give this a shot. So I got my crawfish tail, dip it in this crawfish sauce. Not bad, not bad. I love the seasoning that these crawfish are in, so. So, so, so good. Flavors, man. That is where it's at. Love it. You guys, uh... I love it. And I guess the cool thing is you can just make this however you want it, yeah? Yeah. I mean, everybody probably is there. Some people put orange juice in the boil. Really? What does that do? Add a lot of citrus seeds, more tangy on the crawfish. Well, better try the corn as well. Sweet, a little salty. Very good. A few other things in the boil which I forgot to try, I, uh, or at least on camera, but I did try. I tried like the potatoes. They were good. Obviously, I tried the corn. I'm just going to try the sausage. The sausage is nice and fatty, real good. I got to say, I'm going to try finding all these mushrooms. The, fry, the mushrooms in there were honestly the best thing ever. Is there any mushrooms around? Might have been eaten. Oh, I see one right here. This mushroom just soaks up so much of the salt and the juice. Mm. It's literally an explosion of flavor. So good. So I've eaten like so much of that boil, but now we have all this, this fish. We've got all this fried fish done over here. And we got more being fried. Is that more fish here? Yeah, this is all catfish and perch right here. That's we got so much other stuff after that. Yeah, we got catfish perch. We got so much. We better, uh, let's see if we can grab, is there any plates around or we'll just, we'll just grab a bite. Okay, just grab a bite, guys. Got some of this fresh, fresh catfish. Very good. This is how you do it. Just grab and go. I like it. I can taste a little bit of the mustard in it, but that's a nice vibe. Yeah. Let's grab a piece, put some hot sauce on. You know, that's my favorite way to do it. And while he's making it in the background, let's try a piece of this with the hot sauce. Oh, oh. Mm. Guys, it just tastes so fresh. It is not like fishy at all. That is like, yeah, that is like the cleanest, freshest tasting catfish I've ever had. I mean, we just got it yesterday, so that's amazing. Hot sauce, good addition. Probably not even eat it. And this boil was such an experience. We literally ate for hours on end. I had so much fried fish. We had alligator, we had frog's legs, we had crawfish, and I had it just the way I liked it. Lots of hot sauce, lots of flavor, and that's what everybody here also really appreciated. Oh my gosh, best boil ever. And this was a full day of cooking and eating. Louisiana, you do it right. And here we got the alligator all fried up. It is super hot, but I'm still gonna grab a bite because why not? 
Guys, everything's so good. I just got a delicious bite of that boil. Where's that light? Hold on. Find that. There you go. There's that light. I did a crazy delicious bite of that boil. Wait. Where are you? Playing with the light. I don't know. Whatever. We'll figure it out. But alligator, man. This lighting is not our friend right now. Let me hop out here. There you go. That's so much better. So good, guys. Mm. So alligator, if you never had it, honestly, this one, great seasoning. Still get a little bit of mustard. It tastes like chicken. Like, I've had it a couple times where it's like a little bit of a mix between fish and chicken. This 10 out of 10, if it was served to me, I would not know it was not chicken. Alligator's good. I like it. Fried fish is good, guys. This crawfish boil is absolutely amazing. I have a mushroom. I love the onions. They soak up all the boil juice. So salty, so spicy, so just like, ugh. I love it, guys. This is literally better than any restaurant I've ever had. This is, you cannot compare to this. I'm so thankful for this experience. And we still got crab and uh, frog legs and so much more to come. So better be hungry. Lots of food. All right, so it's a little loud because we got the boiler going right there for the crab. But let's try a frog leg, everybody. Is this a frog leg? Uh, I've had these before, but never fried. So now they did say often that they'll eat these with ketchup. I don't have any ketchup, but I'll try it by itself. I'll try it with some hot sauce. So frog leg. I really do think that sometimes when I've been served chicken wings, I've been given frog's legs instead. Very, very good. These ones are not fishy at all. I've had some before seem fishy. These are not. This literally tastes like chicken. White meat. And I mean, I caught these myself. I got these myself. Try some hot sauce. And like I said, I kind of forgot. I caught these myself, so. That's actually delicious. Like, really, really good. Fried frog legs. Thumbs up. There we go. We got the crabs in the bucket, in the boil. Fresh crabs. Got all the onions, some more mushrooms. You know what I'm going to be picking out? And they just throw them on in there. Get them to a boil. Yep, kill them quick, nice and hot. How long is that going in there for? Six minutes. Six minutes in there. Looking good. Boil six minutes and they soak, right? Cool. Right, we have been eating like so much food, guys. There is so, so, so much food, and we got the full crab boil coming. Right now, another item we have a soft shell crab. So these are crabs that are just molted, so their uh, shells are still soft. They're fried. And I did actually get a plate, so I have a little bit of ketchup, some hot sauce. So I'm gonna try this. So this, again, it's, it's crabs you can eat right with the shell and just literally batter and deep fry. This is a claw, I should give that a go. Oh, mmm. Wow, mm. so nice and sweet. Guys, that's good. Mm. Those seasonings in the batter and everything, phenomenal. Grab a leg. It really does not need any sauce. Mm. So good. But I will try it in a little bit of hot sauce. It's really good, so good. Mmm, guys, and this is the body. Normally, of course, you can't eat a, a crab body because they're hard, but I'm just gonna dip the whole thing, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of hot sauce. And, it, and I wasn't gonna bring out the ketchup. They said this is ketchup. And also they do the ketchup with the frog legs, so give that a bite. Oh my God. That is the best thing ever. So good. Mm. Everything. Guys, it doesn't get much better than this. And here's Louisiana, so it's super sunny a minute ago, and then it's pouring rain here. But hey, it's all good, guys. I gotta say, this freaking crab boil looks amazing. I'm gonna have to get people to show me how to eat them. I just look at this. Got the onions. I have that. 
some of these mushrooms. These are the best things ever. It's like a burst of flavor. Mm. Like I said, they're getting in the crabs now. Let's go figure out how to do that. You just grab the back leg. All right, grab sometimes, back sometimes, sometimes the meat will come out, sometimes it won't. But they just, you know, pull it off like that. All right, drink the juice. Get all your, uh, your insides out, you ain't got much in this one. You take them out all, and you break it in half, right down the middle. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a little bit of meat right there. But, uh, this is the lungs. I like to pull the, the lungs off. Some people like to suck on them, but, you know, you get the good juice in them. Pull the lungs off, and you can just squeeze it like that. It'll make it real easy to peel out. You know, you meet up. Yeah. You breaking the legs and everything? Huh? You breaking the legs? Uh, they ain't got much meat in the inside of the blue crab legs. Okay, so most most, most of it's in the inside. Yeah, but they got meat like in the claw. Not enough to see. Yeah, yeah. The, they in, in the claw, they got huh? the meat right there, and then they got they got a little bit in here too. Some people don't. Uh, yeah. Some people don't eat it out. I like to get it out. That one broke, but uh, yeah, if it comes out, it's kind of a uh, pain sometimes. But uh, they got a little bit of meat in there. All right, let's try this. All right, let's try to figure out this. Uh, try to figure out how to do one of these crabs. All right, so I got this. I'm just trying to split it open, right? Uh, oh yeah, okay, there we go, so we got that. Drink the juice, you said. Tastes good. Get rid of, get rid of, the, get rid of these insides, right? Get rid of these gills, right? And then break it in half. Some, some meat. Just eat it, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I like to squeeze it like that. It makes it easier. But it's like a part of it. Okay. Break it. You just gotta get around the, the shell and everything. Pick it out. And just kind of dig in. There you go. We got some crab meat. Good. It is good, but you definitely work for it. Alright, so this is how awesome it's been. It's about 4.30 now. We started eating about 12.30. I didn't realize it. We've basically been eating, you know, pretty much on and off and like, you know, boiling and whatever and for like four hours. This is insane. Like when they were originally talking about doing this boil at lunchtime, I was like, okay, like, yeah, you will do that. We'll have stuff later on in the day. Hey guys, this is like, I mean, we're still, you know, the eating is pretty much stopped. I have eaten probably 12 crabs. Like I'm full. I had a lot of food. I've probably eaten 12 crabs. Um, you get better at it. I will say you definitely get better. And again, I mean, kind of that like, um, I don't know if it's the knuckle, I think as we call it, like the knuckle, like the attachment, the shoulder attachment kind of on the crab. That's where most of the meat is on the, the blue crabs. We've literally had probably 12 crabs, which were really, really good. Really enjoyed that. I've had, I don't know how many crawfish, like a hundred, maybe more crawfish. I like the crawfish. The seasoning really penetrates the crawfish real well. What I've been eating the living crap out of, every one I've seen is the mushrooms, the onions, um, and the garlic out of the boils. I have probably eaten, and I kid you not, probably about six, six to ten whole onions because I've literally just been eating them out of the boil, <laughs> like whole onions, like literally, because they're each and a half, and I've been eating them like that. I've had, I don't know how many mushrooms, 30 mushrooms. I've had I probably like 10 cloves of, like not, like not 10, like, 
what, probably like 15 to 20 like cloves of garlic. So like probably three or four like full buds of garlic. Um, I've had, you know, a whole, quite a bit of catfish. I had quite a bit of the, the different fried fishes. We had alligator, we had amberjack, we had uh, fro uh, probably a half a dozen frog slices which I've shared all with you here. Uh, pretty much everything we've eaten I've shared at some capacity on the camera, but obviously I haven't recorded the last four hours of eating. Um, guys, this has been intense, literally like four hours of eating, cooking, but it is absolutely amazing. The flavors on this have been definitely the best boil I have ever had. The flavor is just so, so, so delicious. And uh, I got no complaints. And I think he's just finally dumped the crab boil out. I have been, uh, I'm gonna straight out of the bucket. Put the crab in the, or got the crab in the bucket. Do -do -do -do. But I've said, like, eating so much food, this has been amazing. Uh, yeah, so I've now had my first boil, and I learned this is not just a, a sit down, even have like a family dinner. This is a communal event. This is like invite the family, the friends over, and just eat for hours and hours and hours. Like, it's, you know, music, just dump it on a table. It's been crazy. So I finally, like, washed my face so I can still feel all the salt and the spices. Washed my hands. I literally had seafood up to my elbow elbows from opening up this, the crabs and everything but guys words cannot describe this is literally one of those experiences that like I mean arguably money like money cannot really even buy like just to replicate this experience I mean you know you got to have not only the people that know how to do the boil like this but are you know I, the family the friends um, you know somebody to cook for you for hours on end like there is so much meat there is so much food here and still so much like left over it is impressive like we could literally be eating off of this for a week plus like man we ate a lot of food we ate a lot of food sausages and we had corn like everything in that boil but super impressive super delicious I definitely try to get some of that season to bring it home with me although I mean, it, I mean, it would be I, it, what I would, anything I would do would be a sorry excuse for what we experienced today. So, like I said, just like 10 out of 10, super, super cool, and uh, we'll have some more fun, I'm sure here. But man, I am, I am food to the gills. Definitely, you know, food drunk. I, there's a little. I definitely can see eat all those mushrooms, the onions. They just soak up that salty, boiled juice. I'm sure my. Uh, blood sh uh, blood pressure is a little high right now, but definitely need to drink some water. Pee some of that sodium out, but guys, just so good. So, so, so delicious. Like, yeah, this is, words can't describe. This was damn good, damn cool. We at least have a rough idea now how to open up some crabs. The crawfish is pretty much how we've been eating it all along. I mean, it was great. It really, really was. And I mean, like you said, the fact that, I mean, the frogs were so, like the frogs, the fish, um, I mean, obviously the crawfish, the crab, like everything pretty much that we ate today was alive this morning, if that makes sense. Um, and that's just like the best way, the coolest way, like, guys. Like I said, words can't really describe, so. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, we're gonna continue living this Louisiana way, but yeah, we'll keep catching you up on this adventure, this experience, and man, Louisiana's a cool place, a beast of a place, and I got no words, so let's, uh, we'll, we'll catch up a little later, we'll see what other shenanigans we get into, and my hands are a little beat up from some of the crabs, but guys, this was, that's it. I'm going to keep repeating myself, so boils are awesome. All right, everyone, and then now I'm learning a lot. Learning a lot about Louisiana, the, the you know, seafood and everything. Um, so our good friend Hunter, he took us to a friend who does soft shell crab, not really farming, but like, so turns out soft shell crabs are not like a soft shell turtle. Like it's not a different breed of turtle. It is actually catching a crab right after it molts. So, um, and we have Mr. Red Bean here. So basically, so these sh uh, crabs are crabs that have molted and were 
like collect it when they were soft. And we'll show you the tanks and all the process behind this. But can you want to show me how soft some of those were again there? And so this crab right here, this is an empty shell. Yeah, so that's when they molded, right? Yep. So everything, every piece of meat came out of this crab all the way down to the end of his claws. So this crab right here is probably. No, that one's kind of small. So they grow a lot when they come out. Yeah. So this crab right here. That's why they shed, right? Came out of this shell. Yeah. So you can see he grew a good bit. Yeah, it's a big difference. But he, he came all the way out, out the back. Yeah. And all the way to the end of his claws. Every leg, all his gills. Yeah, so look at this. That's the crazy thing. Look how he's bending. Look, like bend the. the yeah, the, he's. Look how you're bending yeah, he's the soft. point. Like, you know, like, and that is the soft shell crab, yeah. which are normally taken and like deep fried or whatever, which, you know, I've had at restaurants and, and I've had before, but I didn't realize it was literally just catching a crab and there's, and you know, like, so once they molt, you have like, what, an hour, a couple hours to uh, these? About two hours and they'll start getting back firm. Yeah. And you and don't, which is no good. Then they'll just go back hard to the regular shell they had. And then it's not a soft shell crab. And it's not a soft shell crab so, until they're ready to molt again. It's crazy. So you literally have like an hour to two hours and, and you're mentioning how, so whenever you have the tanks full of crabs, you're getting up like every couple hours. Every two hours you have to get up all through the night, all through the, the day. Um, they shed better at night, so it's real busy at night when you have a yeah. tank full of crabs. Which is just crazy to think about, like how much effort actually goes in to get these soft shell crabs. Now again, you're probably wondering, like the actual dollar figure. So apparently it sounds like you could, you know, again, all goes well. There's a lot of work, costs and stuff associated, but you can make six to seven times your money if, you know, all goes well, which it's is pretty good. Really and obviously, you know, if you have enough of these on the go, it's definitely worth, I mean, you know, it could add up, but Let's, uh, I'm gonna show, see those tanks again real quick. They're super impressive. So these are the tanks where you normally have, again, they're empty, but you normally have the uh, soft shell crabs. So these guys here, um, I already molted. So they're like hard again. So they kind of missed the opportunity, the couple hour window. So basically they're just a normal crab. They're gonna go get thrown back in the water. Whereas you're saying, so normally like this guy over here, which is going to molt, so there's like a couple ways you can tell on a crab. They kind of get some red lines and colorations. Yeah, this, so this one is kind of brown, which is normal of a fat crab. It's gonna have a brown belly. Yeah. Normally they have a red tint to the bottom of the belly. You can see, another thing I didn't tell you a while ago, he's growing yeah, a little claw. another claw. So that's why they moat. They yeah. grow, they regrow all their extremities. Yeah, so they'll they grow their leg back. So when he, when he moats, this claw is gonna be just as big as this claw. Yeah. Yeah. And on the back fin, it's going to be hard to see, I'll put it to the light, but on the back fin right here, there's a red line. They, right. go, they call it a boomerang. It goes all the way around the bottom of this fin right here. And, and that means it's going to molt soon. That means he's going to molt soon. The, red, the deeper red the line is and the thicker the line is, the closer he is to molt. And then, and then, like you said, I'll kind of summarize it so you, yeah, so we, 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 just, it. we throw them all in the tank. Some might take four days, some might take seven days, some yeah. might take a day. And just wait um, till they molt, right? And yep. Then and separate them out and wash them closely. So we, we, we feel on the bottom of the point right here, there's a line that cracks when they get close to molting. And we'll put them in the rings. And that way we know if, if we got 50 crabs in this tank, we know just to look at the ones in the rings. But we go through every crab every morning and every evening, so every 12 hours. Right. And the ones that are fixing the moat, we put in these springs, and we only have to look at those. And another thing, if you don't have all what we call buster crabs, or peeler crabs, or redline crabs, if you have a crab that's not close to molten or busting, yeah. if a crab busts in the tank, that other crab will eat it. Yeah, so you gotta watch them. So you have to know that yeah, you have to know you don't have a crab like that in the tank because you'll start losing the crabs. And then you gotta figure out which one is not a red line buster or peel a crab, whatever you, you would call it. Cool. Well, definitely, th I know you, uh, you kind of told me that twice, so I appreciate you oh, sharing fine, the yeah. info. But the other one thing I want to point out, so again, lots of you know effort, obviously, with the setups, the extreme hours of having to watch these things, you know, make sure they molt. Yeah, but look at this, guys. So then, they actually have kind of these big filtration systems and they use a lot of shells and stuff to help keep the natural bacteria levels to keep the ammonia down and stuff so you know in a pet store you ever look in a filter there's all kinds of chemicals and carbons and stuff 
what I think is so cool is, you know, they can more or less use the help of these oyster shells and everything to kind of help do that naturally. So it's like, you know, it, it, it really is amazing what people can do, you know, like you let it work. So, so people have been doing it for years. Yeah, crazy. You know, just, just like anything else. I mean, who was the, the first guy to figure this out that you could eat a soft shell crab? I don't and, know. And, and to shed them like but this. Whoever did. <laughs> They're smart because they, they, they taste good. I'll tell you that my had some earlier. So, hey man, well thank you for uh, thank you for showing us. It's yes, super sir. cool. Thank you, thanks to Hunter for bringing us out here. And uh, there you go, guys. So next time you eat a soft shell crab, and even if you because you probably pay a little bit more for them, they're usually a little pricey, a little you know sought after. There's a lot of work, a lot of effort that went into it. So learn something new, Louisiana. After a full day of eating being a crawfish boil, in which I learned that often people in the neighborhood, your family, your friends, they just kind of invite everybody, you know what I mean? And this is something where usually somebody's having a boil on the weekend. So during crawfish season, if you're not having a boil with all your friends, your friend is, and so you can go join them, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And now officially marks the start of our saltwater fishing adventure in Grand Isle. So I hope you enjoy both day and night fishing. And Gina's on. Although I think it's a, I think it's a big catfish. Big sail cat. Hey, that means it's okay. An okay keeper fish. Got her net. Get some action going here. She caught a trout a minute ago. Oh yeah, that's a good sized cat. Yeah. And these these sail cats are actually pretty fish. They got you know big white bellies, these big crazy dorsal fin thing things. And Billy just hooked up too. Look at that, we got a we got a big no. Uh, it was a big speckled trout. Ah, damn. That was close. Oh well. I have uh, I have video proof of it, but hey, that was a good one, Billy. That was a that was a good catch. And Gina just got a real nice speckled trout. Looking good. And we got another one, literally just like that, right after that. That is a big one. Good job, Gina, you're on fire today. And literally in like five minutes, third fish, a channel mullet. I guess it's still good to eat, so. Yes. Again, Gina is feeding us today. All right, first fish of the day. I just got a channel mullet. And Gina with the biggest white trout of the day. Holy crap, that thing's huge. Wrong cooler, wrong cooler. <laughs> we put the fish in with the drinks earlier, so. Yeah, guys, we are successfully fishing. Literally, we caught nothing for three hours, and now we've caught like, what? Seven, seven or eight fish in five, like 10 minutes max. Gina again with the trophy fish, woo. That is a big, that's a, nice that's a huge speckled trout. That is a meal right there. And we got another one, a big old channel mullet. <laughs> Guys, we're actually catching now. And Billy just caught two at one time, a catfish and a mullet. Good job, Billy. And another one. We're getting so, and Gina's gotten 50 in the meantime, so we've gotten so many, you've stopped keeping track. All right, everybody ready with the boat? We're catching fish. Look at that, Billy, good job. Got, uh, I think I've got got three in the last like 10 minutes. Billy's gotten a good handful himself. All white trout. Gina, you get one yet? Or you're not? I didn't even get my line. You didn't even get the line yet, guys. There you go. Not even everybody lined the water. We're catching fish. These rigs work. We got basically lights in the water and just off the pier, dock, whatever you call it. So let's catch some more. And you can actually see the fish with the lights. There you go. Like you saw one a second ago. We can see some of the fish there. Yeah, look at that right there. And I literally just caught two on the same at the same time. There's one. Oh, I just put the other one. You put the other one there too. Yeah, yeah. There's the other one. <laughs> Guys, there's literally fish everywhere. This is insane. Look at this. Let's see if I can get if I can get the you know fish getting on here on the camera. Basically, we're just literally jigging. They're actually spitting out little minnows when we catch them. We're reusing them because they keep they're they're catching them pretty hot. There you go, I was just getting a bite. Pretty impressive. Look at that, look at that. She's got one. Woo! Good job. And we had a whole bunch of dolphins and porpoises come in. Scare off all the fish. Look, there's literally one right there. See how close they are? I mean you can almost reach out and grab them. Um, so yeah, we had such look at that, look at that so crazy. 
We had so many fish that they came in to eat them all and obviously scared them away, but pretty cool how close they are. But also at the same time, go away. And we've got another one. We've gotten so many we started to throw the little ones back. Let's see, this cooler was empty and it is very full of fish and there's even a few drinks in there, so there you go. We've gotten so many fish that I think I even have one on. I'm just gonna try to video show you guys. So, and any of I mean any little ones like that we're just throwing back anyway, so good stuff though guys, they are back and they are around. All right, we made it in probably about uh, 40, 30 to 40 fish heavier, covered in fish scales and fish juice all over, and probably released about 20, 20 fish. So crazy fishing night, pretty cool. That definitely blew my other fishing nights out of the water. Um, we were out there for a total of probably three, three-ish hours, but uh, I mean, pretty action packed. So good stuff, Louisiana. It really is crazy. Second morning, third day, Grand Isle, guys. Looking beautiful. This is before 7 a.m., about 7 a.m. It was a late night because we didn't get back off the water until after 1 a.m. And uh, I mean, night fishing was really cool, very rewarding, but not a lot of sleep. By the time I got to bed, it's probably like three. So anyway, let's uh, hit the water again and see what we can get. We just saw a shark and it literally chased fish on the bank. See that fish flop in there? That was real cool. So we definitely found the fish. If we went to the bank, like if we went to the bank, we'd literally be able to grab some fish. I don't know if you can see them, but there's a couple up there. That was cool, sharks and fish on the bank. Now the fish are coming, we got a little mullet. We got a sail cat, which is a pretty good size. Can you pull it up? There you go. All right, here, let me grab one now and switched over to a shrimp, and literally right away, got ourselves our first, first mullet. Guys, we're onto some fish, woo! And we got some more action, we caught all kinds of little fish like that. Caught some bigger ones, caught some mullets, caught some catfish, but we've been letting them go. Still a nice day on the water. They're not biting as hard as they were before, but definitely still getting some bites. There we go, we got a uh, mangrove, something something but it's a red fish looks pretty we moved under this bridge so we're in real deep water so maybe we'll catch some different fish we got something on in the front we got gina with a catfish we got oh sailfish lots of catfish here all right well we're heading on in we got a couple fish wasn't too bad not as exciting as the last two uh, endeavors out, but still got a huge trout. We got a few of those mullet things. Mullets? What are those called? Channel. Yeah, channel mullets. And it wasn't too bad, so still got something to take home, which is better than a lot of fishing trips. And that was our Grand Isle fishing adventure. And here's a photo of me and Billy with just some of our catch, of course, excluding the countless fish we ate, we also threw back. Um, and I gotta say, I caught the biggest fish on a reel I ever had in my life. I caught more fish this trip than I ever had in my life combined prior to this. This was amazing. Louisiana is awesome, awesome. Really, it's crazy that you can like live off the water down here. Like if I lived down here, I would never buy meat at a store. I would just eat fish, like seafood, which I never eat because it's just so pricey and stuff. So this is awesome, super crazy. Again, huge thanks to Gina and Billy making it happen. And those fish we caught, well, let's just say Miss Gina did all the difficulty. I would have tried to help clean if I could have, but I, I'm not skilled in that. So huge thank you to her for doing that. But guys, we're gonna get some fish frying going. We got some oil heating up. Miss Jean is also just doing the final batterings here. Some mustard, some hot sauce to make the uh, batter adhere. That kind of rhymed. The New Orleans style fish fry. We're gonna have some fried fish here in just a moment. There we go. We got the fish a frying. Food's not done yet, but I couldn't help myself. I got a piece here. All right, 
It is steaming. It tastes so good. The seasonings, the spices. I mean, I was going to put a hot sauce on it, and I didn't even yet. It is fantastic. Thank you, Gina. Well, I gotta say, I ate so much catfish. It's actually funny, it's like, it was such a temperature difference from in there and it's so humid hot out here that there's actually a little bit of uh, like condensation forming on the camera lens, which is kind of funny. Anyway, uh, ate a whole bunch of the, not, well, some of it was catfish, but a whole bunch of the fried fish, that was delicious, like I said. You definitely know how to do it with the seasonings and the fish fry, it was awesome. I eat it with hot sauce, I love it with hot sauce. I had about a half a bottle of hot sauce and a good pile of fish, I'm not gonna lie. So that was absolutely fantastic. Um, so definitely had a real nice, fresh Louisiana dinner. I mean, those things were alive earlier, really, which is nuts. You know, less than, you know, anywhere between 12 and I guess the couple fish we got last night, less than 24 hours. So look at this sunset though guys, I gotta say these Louisiana sunsets have just been stunning. They literally look like they are fake and out of a movie, like just look at that, absolutely insane. So yeah, super, super, super gorgeous, super cool, there's the wharf. Long story short, Louisiana is awesome. Again, huge thanks to Billy, Gina. Thanks to everybody here on the channel for helping support me to help us get to this point where we're able to go live like we lived in Louisiana for a couple days. And uh, this was just an amazing, memorable experience. I will never forget. This is awesome. Louisiana is called the Sportsman's Paradise for a reason. And at that, everybody, until next time, thank you for watching. Hey, guess what? You rock. Yes, you rock. Thank you so much for watching the video. I totally appreciate it. I hope you left me a comment down below. I'd love to read them. I hope you also liked that video. Hey, by the way, click my face. You can subscribe. Yes, subscribe. That way you always get my uploads. You won't miss me when I'm in your town. And I also picked two videos for you. Yes, two videos I know you'll love right here. So watch one of those. Hit my face. And at that, thank you so much. You rock.